Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be building what you see on the screen which is of course a seven segment display. And in order to make this work we're going to turn it into a simple counter. As you can see we're just counting through the digits on the screen. Now in order to achieve the desired result here we're going to be using a combination of Espresso and Python. It's that simple. That's what we're about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. I'll bring in a text spline and change my font to Quartz. Now, you may not have Quartz in your font library and if you wish to use a similar font, if we just switch to the internet, 1001 free fonts here. If you click on LCD, you'll find the second font is Open24 Display, which is perfect for this particular job. You can download it for free. And I'd just like to add that I'm not sponsored by 1001 free fonts in any way, shape or form for this video. So they just happen to be a, a good place to get free fonts from. So, yep, that's the way to do it. Just head on over to there and download Open24 Display. Anyway, let's continue from where we left off. So back to Cinema 4D. In the text line here, I'm just going to place a number eight because that covers all eventualities. And then I'll bring in a rectangle and this will form the casing for the actual display. What we'll do is switch to our front view, so F4. Place this somewhere around the middle of the number eight just by I, so somewhere around there I think will be okay. And then we can adjust the size in the height and width to somewhere around, I think somewhere around there will work fine. Put a bit of rounding on it, maybe just five centimeters of rounding. And that looks good. Yeah, that's gonna work fine. The next thing I'm going to do is actually copy this text spline. So I'll hold down my command key and drag and these two I'm going to place or I'm going to group them actually so I'll, I'll just say option G for group group them into a null and then make them disappear for now and then this second text line is the one that we're going to be using to make the seven segments so we'll hit C to make it editable we're in points mode and we can start thinking about separating each of the segments so we'll start with this one at the top and come down to clone here and it will and it will be split so up is what we can use for that and we'll use that in the future so that's all looking good now what we need to do is just place this above the null so that we don't get confused and label it a because although it's a seven segment display we actually label the segments a to g so that segment A ready. And we can move on from here and do the rest of them. So we'll do our second segment, repeat the process, clone, split or UP. And we can then rename this B, place it at the top there. And then it's a case of rinse and repeat. So I'll get the rest of them done. And then by the power of editing, I'll come back to you when I've done it. And finally, G. OK, so we've got all of our segments created and they're all labelled correctly. The way to do it is A, B, C, D, E, F and G. That's the order in which they need to be done. Once this is done, we can lose this particular spline because it has no further use for us. And now we're ready to continue from here. So we can call this uh, casing because what we're going to be doing here is if we just bring that back for a minute, we're going to be placing this into an extrude. So we'll select them both, hold down command and option and drop them into an extrude. 
and what have we got there now at the moment they're not working and the reason when they're not working is of course because we need to make them editable and then we can say connect objects and delete so that's great so we've got that casing ready now I'm not too worried about this opening at the back here because we won't see it I mean if you're going to be seeing the back of your surround then you you do need to uh, or your casing I should say then you do need to do something about that but it's easy enough to sort that out just build something that can go over the back of it that's really easy but what we're going to do next is just adjust the casing here I just want to adjust this extrude it's a bit too much let's go say I don't know 60 that's more like it I think it's I mean that this isn't to scale obviously but that's that's more like it I think that would be okay now each of our segments they also need to be placed into an extrude so I'll just hold, hold down my option key because they all need their own extrude so hold that option key down and then we can adjust the offsets and they can just be set to zero because they don't need to be anything else. Let's just go into our display, so garage shading lines, and we can see that they're there now. That's actually there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do with the extrude here, in the caps, I will add some rounding, a small amount, just say 0.5, and that just gives it a bit of extra definition, and I like what I'm seeing there. That looks really nice. That's starting to look exactly the way I'd like it to look. So yeah, that's that's fine. And then basically moving on from here, we need to create a couple of textures that we can apply to our seven segments. So that will be our next border core. Let's just open our textures, double click to create one. This will be off. So, well, we'll do it that, might as well do it in caps. It doesn't really matter, does it? And in our color, we'll take this down to a darkish red so we'll bring these two out and we'll just take this down somewhere there almost a brown really but it's just a very dark red and then we can move on to our, our reflectance we don't want the initial specular we'll take that away the default specular and we'll add a Beckman attenuation we'll just well use additive doesn't really matter for this but we'll, we'll use it anyway and the color will make a sort of lightish red somewhere there and then we can start thinking about what we're doing here the roughness well don't really need much we'll just make that sort of about four and the reflection strength I'll take down to around 85 the specular we can leave it as it is and the well, bump we're not really using but we can just leave that at 100 percent doesn't really matter so that's looking good we've got that set up and that will work for us i think so let's just drag that onto here and we can see if we, even if we render that we can see that it's the right sort of color it's a very dark red which is exactly what we'd expect it to be and that's looking good so I'm gonna I'm gonna settle for that for what it is I mean feel free to do whatever you like with these I mean this is just the way I'm doing it for this demonstration you, you obviously you can go a lot further with texturing if you wish to double click again and we'll create the on texture just call that on and let's have a look and see what we've got in here this time we don't need color we just need luminance we'll make this a very bright red so just take that down to there that's fine Reflectance, again, we'll remove the default specular and add a Beckman. Again, I'll use an additive type for the attenuation. Roughness for 85 for the reflection strength. I'll leave the other two where they are. And the color, again, a very light sort of red somewhere around there. And that's it. I think that will do fine for uh, for what we need. Let's just place, place that on there. And we can see that they're going to contrast fine with each other and they look pretty good, don't they? Now, another thing you can do, if you wish, is add some glow, some very subtle glow to this. It's entirely up to you whether you choose to do that. Uh, or you could, of course, put glow in at, in post-production uh, if you choose to render this out. But anyway, I'll leave that with you. I'm not going to go there for this particular demonstration. This is perfectly good for what I need. Okay, great, so that's our textures complete. 
The next thing we need to do then is get this thing working as a counter and get it cycling through the various numbers that it can display. And in order to do that, we're going to resort to our old friends, Expresso and Python. Before we open the Expresso editor, I'm just going to set every segment up with the on texture. So we'll drag that onto there and then we can just select this and command drag onto the remaining segments so that each of them has a material tag. That's the important thing. The algorithm will take care of this once we've set it out. OK, great. So we've got that done. We can bring in another null, call it Espresso, give it the Espresso tag. We've got the window open and we're ready to start doing some work. The first thing we'll bring in will be a time node. So we'll get a hold of one of those, bring it in, and you probably guess that I will remove the time port and add a frame port. The next node that we require is the all important Python node. So we'll bring one of those in, remove all of its ports and start from scratch. At the input stage, we need an integer and we need to rename that frame. And we can connect the output of our time node to the frame port. The yellow top, don't worry about that. It's because things aren't set up. It will take care of itself as we get things sorted out. At the output stage, we actually need seven outputs and they will be for the extrudes material tags. That's what we're going to be taking control of here. So we'll bring those in. Once again, there'll be integers. Seven of them, as I said. So that's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just make the Python node a little bigger so that we can see what we're doing. And we just need to rename them. And we'll rename them after the uh, segment, so A, B, C. D, etc. So let's start doing that. Rename port. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and finally G. Fantastic. We've got our Python node set up and ready to go. And the next step is to switch to a scripting layout. Once again, select our Python node and open in Python editor. And we're ready to start putting some code together. We can start by removing this line because we don't need it. And then we can work out our global variables. We need quite a few. So obviously we need all of our outputs here to be defined as global variables. So B, C, D, E, F, and G. But then I'll also do these again as capital letters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and you'll see why. And finally, we just need counter. So that's our global variables set up for us and ready to go. Now, moving on from here, we need to define seven. And on this occasion, they're not going to be seven lists. They're going to be seven tuples. And if you've seen my uh, tutorial, my Python Bytes tutorial on tuples, you'll know where I'm coming from. If you haven't, I'll put a card on the screen and you can take a look at that if you wish to. It goes into what tuples are and the actual functionality of them. But anyway, we're going to define seven tuples. Now, how are we going to go about doing this? What we're going to do, the tuples actually need to contain zeros and ones, and they're going to control when each of these segments needs to be switched on or switched off in order to display the correct number at the correct time. Now, in order to achieve this, I've created what is known as a truth table. And I'm going to put that on the screen now and we'll go through it. OK, so we've got our truth table on the screen and we can see what we're doing with it. Now, 
we've got seven columns and we can see that we've got segments a b c d e f and g labeled there and we've also got our numbers along the top from one to zero so we can see the way this is going to work what we've got our first segment will need a zero in its first location within the tuple because of course it will be switched off now segments b and c will need to be switched on if we're going to be to display a number one and we can see that segments b and c are both set to a number one following on from here d e f and g will all need to be off so they're all zeros so you can see that that's how they're going to work our tuples though will be made up of the values in each of the rows. The columns represent the actual numbers. Therefore, our first tuple needs to be 0, 1, 1, 0, and then the rest of the numbers will all be 1s. That will be our first tuple. Our second, as we can see, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and then the rest will all be 1s, etc. So that's how we're going to set our tuples up. That's the way the truth table actually works. It tells us which of our segments need to be switched on or off at any given time in order to create the correct numbers. And obviously we're going to sequence through them. Hopefully that explains the way all of this works. And now we can think about setting up our first tuple. We'll say A is equal to, and I'm not gonna put these in round brackets. You can if you're working with tuples, but I won't. I'll just say 0, 1, 1, 0, and then the rest are all 1s. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And if I'm correct, I should have 10 values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've got 10 digits, and everything is correct. Moving on from here, we'll say B is equal to, and it will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 comma zero comma zero comma one comma one comma one comma one and it's just a case of rinse and repeat until they're all complete so by the power of editing i'll get them all done and then come back to you and that completes g so that's all of our tuples now in place. And if everything has been done correctly, they should do the job for us. Moving on from here, we can say if frame is equal to zero. So when what is coming out of our frame variable here into here is zero. So when we're at the beginning of the animation, basically, we can now set things up now initially we want this to be switched off the whole thing needs to be switched off so we can say a is equal to zero and do the same for the rest of the variables so b or the rest of the outputs really is equal to zero c is zero d zero and finally g is equal to zero. We can also say that we want our counter to be equal to minus one. So we're sending the counter up as minus one at first, so it's not even going to be looking at anything that's going on in these initially. Okay, so that's quite important. The next part of it, we can say if frame is greater than zero, and frame modulo, so percentage sign, 15 is equal to, not 150, 15 is equal to zero. So once the animation has started and we reach 15 frames or multiples of 15 frames thereafter, we want something to happen. The first thing that we can say is if counter is less than nine we can move on from here we can say counter plus equals one okay and then we can start working with our counter to actually make our numbers so we can say output a is equal to and it will be a 
square brackets counter that's going to be the formula for it and again we've got to repeat this for all of the others through to g so let's copy this paste it here and just change the a for a b and the capital a for a capital b and that's all we've got to do drop that down there place that in oops d small d and capital and just F and G to go so we'll just put that in there and G okay great so th this will output using the count of the first set of numbers here then the second the third the fourth etc and we'll get the segments lit as they need to be to produce the values to finish off we simply need to say else and it will be counter is equal to minus one so once we've been through the sequence we can then reset the counter back to minus one and it will switch everything off again okay and that completes the code that's as much as we need to do in the python node and we're all set up and ready to go provided everything is correct i mean there may be a bug but i hope there isn't but you know if if there's anything that isn't quite working we can easily debug it afterwards but anyway we'll move on from here and get the rest of the espresso done we'll make the window a little bit bigger for the espresso editor move this over here and open up our materials and we'll drag both of these in and they need object ports at the output stage so we'll give them those and they're now ready to go moving on from here we need seven conditions so we'll bring one in and we will set it up we'll place it up here its data type needs to be material so we'll set that up there that's ready to go and then we can just simply command drag to copy another six of these and get our last one there okay so we're all set up and we're ready to go now the switches are going to be controlled by the outputs of our Python node A through G here. So if we just start plumbing these in, just get those done. That's the first step. And then we can think about what we're going to be doing with the materials here so the off materials need to be plumbed into the first inputs here so input number two they all need to be the offs get those wired in And then the ons need to be plumbed into input number three so they go in there and that completes that stage so there's quite a bit of wiring going on um, but it's pretty straightforward stuff it actually looks a little bit like a silicon chip doesn't it or at least one half silicon chip which is you know pretty much i suppose what it is really it's like a, this is like the control chip that makes everything work but anyway moving on from here we need to bring in the material tags for each of our extrudes so we'll bring the first one in and this needs a material port 
in our tag properties and there it is highlighted that's what that needs to be and straight away you can see that this has been switched off okay that's that's good so it's working thus far let's bring in the others and gradually plumb those in so we'll plumb this one in here material and that should now be off and it is but it's the wrong one now that's interesting I've got the wrong one coming out of there so that's that's very interesting so there may be a bug there that we need to sort out we can easily take a look at that and see what's going on but anyway let's plumb the rest of them in oh sorry I've picked up I've, I've, it's the wrong one it's not I, I should have used that one let's see what we've got now that now that's better that one's still like it because it, it just will be we bring that one in here and then plumb this into here that will be correct so we want number four here just bring that into there plumb this in tag properties material and you can see they're all switching off as we do it which is exactly what we need to happen there we go and this just get this last one in here and tag properties material and now we are completely switched off which is what we want and that completes the espresso expression that's as much as we need to do so everything is set up the way it needs to be now provided there are no bugs we should be able to run the timeline and things should work but so let's give this a go and see what happens one two three four five okay we haven't got enough frames let's give ourselves a few more let's give ourselves 150 frames but let's just run this again yeah it's perfect we just need a few more frames because the zero doesn't last long enough to make this 180. let's just see what happens now there you go working exactly as it needs to wonderful so that is how you go about creating a seven segment display and that brings us pretty much to the end of the tutorial because that is what I wanted to show you in this one we'll just go back to the standard layout and let that count through but yeah I mean that's your expression there and you've obviously got a bit of Python there too but that's in essence the espresso expression that you use to create this setup so quite simple just it's a number of things repeated that's just seven times uh, that, that's all it is really uh, and all we're doing is feeding the on and off materials to the correct segment at the correct time in order to make the numbers appear it's it's really very simple so uh, yeah that's that's basically it for this one really so as always I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it's inspired you and given you some ideas for things that you might be able to incorporate in your own projects and if you have enjoyed the video then please give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel leave a comment and of course ring the bell and wherever you happen to be on social media please please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help to keep the channel moving in the right direction but anyway that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.